Hi everybody, this is E from the Eels. I'm here at Amoeba. Let's see what's in my bag. So get all in like Tom and King. Everything and what it's worth is relative. Look, my friend, it's a good night on Earth. I found some amazing stuff. This is Roberta Flack's first take, which is great to have on vinyl. I was not familiar with this album. Everybody's heard, um, there's a big hit on it, the, fir the first time ever I saw your face. Felt the earth move in my hand. But the rest of it I didn't know, and I, and I took a chance on it, and um, it's a solid album all the way through, and I'm happy to have it on vinyl now. This, I have never heard of. I thought I had everything by Bobby Gentry. I just found this. It was hard to find her. I looked in the pop vocal section. I looked in the oldies section. She was hiding in the country section, which she is a little bit country. She's a little bit rock and roll. She's a little bit everything. She's the consummate great artist. And this says it's her lost 1969 jazz album, which I've never heard of. I really thought I knew everything about her and I had everything by her. So I hope this is good, but I'm excited about this. How long must they cry? Let the sun shine through. That's the beauty of coming to the record store. That's what, yeah, this wouldn't have happened. I didn't see this on eBay. Although it's probably there. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bobby Womack calls his live album, The Womack Live. Not Bobby Womack Live, but The Womack Live. It's great to have this on vinyl. It's one of, in my opinion, one of the greatest live albums ever made, possibly even the greatest one, really. It's amazing, it's recorded in a, a tiny little club in uh, South Central LA, and it's just smoking performances and, and just full of joy. One of the great Bo uh, Bobby Womack-isms is he starts out probably most of his songs with a little spoken interlude for some reason. I read his autobiography and he says, yeah, people give him a hard time for that. He doesn't know why he does it. But, but uh, on the uh, first song he comes out, they do an intro, and. It, first song comes out and they start playing the beginning of the song and he, he can't help himself, he has to say, oh man, I love this song. Oh, how I like this song, Miss Cuba. Highly recommend seeking this one out. Okay, so I feel like an important part of my job as an established artist is to help expose lesser known artists to the world. So I've been talking a lot about this group, the Beatles, lately. And look at this behemoth. This is a behemoth box set. I've already opened it. Check out all the stuff in here. There's the regular album. And they give you this uh, sessions, rehearsals, and jams. Two discs there. I don't even know what this is. A couple of different mixes. This book. Look at this. Crazy. Crazy, crazy book. Really big and extensive, it looks like. But here's the real reason why I wanted it. It comes with the original Glenn John's version of the Get Back album that the Beatles all rejected to a man, and it has never come out for 50 years until now. Nothing's gonna change my world. Nothing's gonna change our world. 
with the original intended cover and liner notes and like to have this on vinyl is is amazing to me and unfortunately the only way you can get it is in this extremely expensive behemoth box set but my advice is put out your own music for 20 or 30 years and just wait for amoeba to invite you down to do one of these and get a free copy do you know why they rejected that version? Um, it's kind of raw compared to the Let It Be album that they put out, which is the opposite. It's a, they got Phil Spector to do that one, and, and you know Paul McCartney fam famously hated that for being too sweetened with strings and choirs and stuff. Nothing's gonna change my world. This is the opposite of that. It's very raw, but it's really good. Ah, uh, Marvin Gaye. Here, my dear, here Such a genius. This was in the 70s. He, um, this is a double album that he, uh, he'd been divorced by his wife and in an unusual court ruling, they ruled that the royalties for Marvin's next album would go to his ex-wife. So he titled the album, Here, My Dear. <laughs> what a genius. And it's a great album. It doesn't have like any of his big hits. It, I think this is the next one that came out after his biggest hits, uh, What's Going On and Let's Get It On, all the On albums. But it's, it's really a great record and if you don't know it, Seek it out, and it's so cool to have it on vinyl. Wow. Oh, speaking of Marvin, Marvin Gaye Live. Oh. Look at this. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I gotta get a pair of those for the next tour. This is um, quite extraordinary, it's a really, fantastic live album all the way through. But what's extraordinary to me is this was at the peak of his uh, commercial success, right after um, What's Going On and Let's Get It On, I think. And he didn't want to tour. You know, he, was, he had his moods. He just wasn't in the mood to tour. And he rehearsed for weeks, all just to do, his whole tour was one show in Oakland. And that's what this is. And he didn't even show up to the last rehearsal and they didn't know if he was going to be there. And it's just amazing to me. It sounds like this was recorded like on the 50th night of a huge world tour where everyone really was locked in and knew what they were doing. But it was just one performance and that's all he did for a couple years. And, but it's really musically solid. Thank you, Marvin. I'm very happy to find this one on vinyl. This is a, a Little Richard album that's, I don't think it's very well known because it's not from his more famous era. I, I love to like seek out records by artists not in their prime. Like I love like 70s Elvis records and 70s Ray Charles records. I find there's a lot of charm and a lot of merit to a lot of it really but it's not what people think of normally when they think of Elvis or Ray Charles. And, and this is a great example of that. It's the early 70s, like 71, 72, and uh, Little Richard, he does a version of uh, the Rolling Stones, Brown Sugar, that's fantastic on there. And it's, it's really unique, but it's really rocking. Check it out sometime. Good to have it on vinyl. That sounds great. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, lastly, Astrid Gilberto. Look at that album cover. When I haven't got anything better to do. Nowadays, this would all be like all the pores would be photoshopped, and you know, this is this is a natural woman. You make me feel like a natural woman. This is a solid album all the way through. It's, it's got the great title, 
I haven't got anything better to do. Which is a song about uh, protesting too much, saying, I don't think about you at all. Just once in a while when I don't have anything better to do. It's the only time I think about you. But it's a great album all the way through. I love it. She does a Harry Nilsson song on here. Listen to my crying on my pillow. Crying for I know my love has gone from me. It's pretty hard to find, though. So I got mine. Good luck, suckers. <laughs> Thanks for all the free shit. Ha, 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 ha.